Hello everybody and welcome. My name's Alison, I'm a professional musician and I run a YouTube channel called The Online Piano and Violin Tutor, which you will see in a link coming up on the screen somewhere now. Um, I have been sent some violin microphones to trial, review, give my opinion of and uh, basically see what I think from the lovely people from Remic, which have sent me these microphones that you see here. Um, if I just start by giving you a little bit of a background to the company and then I will go into what you get. Um, I'm also going to do a, quite a lengthy demonstration for you as well so you can hear exactly what the microphone is going to sound like but that will come a little bit later on. So if I just give you a general background um, to these microphones, um, it's a Danish run company. They were founded in 2010 by Thorkild Larsen. He is the, the owner of the company. Um, Thorkild and his team have spent uh, many years developing these microphones and it is also based on himself and his team um, being many years of course in the industry as well uh, with the know-how being able to develop these microphones that are uniquely set for instrumentalists or in this case violinists such as myself. Um, they generally tend to base their microphones on the undertones and the overtones of the violin. So what they've done is split the violin frequencies into three sections. So they've got their fundamental tone register, which is the very highest that the violin, or the very highest note register level that the violin can get to, uh, ranging to the very lowest. Then the next thing you've got is the primary overtone register, um, which is amplified by the soundboard and it is dependent on the wood of the violin, the varnish of the violin, all those kind of different aspects on the violin. And then you've got the secondary overtone register, which is the friction between the bow and the strings. And what that does is it picks up the movement of air molecules um, as, as the, obviously as the bow is moving along the strings. So what I've been sent, uh, first of all, is um, the, the V5200LB, um, which comes in a little box like this. And when you open it up, it's quite a, to be honest, it's quite a nice little box actually, because it's it's quite small and compact to travel with, travel with as well. So if I was going out to gigs and things, you know, it's very, very light. Um, it would be no hassle just to pop in my bag and, uh, you know, then I know that if, if it did, my bag did get knocked around, then I know that the microphone would be nice and safe in this little box. It's a plastic box, not heavy, so it's great. Um, of course, when you open it up, you get a little instruction leaflet inside as well, or you know, just with a bit, a little bit of extra, extra information. But it comes in this, this neat little pouch here, and when you open it up, the microphone looks like this. So it comes with the cable wrapped around, um, and the microphone itself kind of looks like this. So when you have your violin and you have the microphone, there are a couple of places where you can actually place the microphone. Um, now, when I first got this, um, it was, I, I must admit, I did have a look at it um, and I did, um, I did wonder what I was going to do with it. Um, however, after looking at the instructions, of course, um, and it was showing me, I actually thought it was very, a very, very clever um, idea. Um, I almost wish that I'd had this, I don't know, three or four years ago. The microphone that I'm actually, or that I was using, uh, because of obviously before I had this was one of these so it was like a clip-on microphone so you might have seen it in some of my previous videos where it clips oh, I clip mine onto the tailpiece um, and it sort of hooks over so two places to put uh, the microphone first of all so what you want to do is you've got sort of a flat end where you've got the felt end here which is flat and then you've got sort of a, a wedge looking edge here the flat end obviously goes under the fingerboard and you just kind of wedge it in, like so. And then the rest of the cable that you've got here can, you've got a little, uh, sort of like um, a little wedge, a, a kind of foam wedge here. What, that you, what you can do with that is just pop that underneath or just pop it into the little end of the, the little hole that you've got there on the fingerboard and that just nicely sits in there so you haven't got cable kind of flapping about all over the show. Um, Another good thing about this is that the cable is a silicone woven cable, so um, the other one that I've got is like a plastic cable, so when that's sometimes hitting, hitting against the violin when I'm moving and doing whatever, a mid-record, it's actually picking up the sound of that as well, which means I've got to do another take because it's no good, but because of the wedge foam that you've got here, you just sort of push the foam in, slip it underneath the fingerboard, absolutely no damage at all to your violin, and then you know the cable is sitting safe and sound. The second place that you can put your microphone is going to be in the, the tailpiece. Now this is where I prefer, I personally prefer to, to put the microphone myself. Putting it underneath the tailpiece, it's the same thing. You use the flat side, which goes against the, the body or the wood of the violin, 
um, then you use the, the wedge, the highest part of the wedge is where the microphone is, the lowest part is obviously where the cable is. So you just sort of push it in, gently push it in and pop it in. Because of the wedge, it, you can sort of push it in as far down as you like. I push it sort of two or three, four, almost to the top. I don't want to push it too much. So obviously I don't want to damage my tailpiece. Um, but obviously there's no risk of damage because it's all soft foam, so that, that's fine. And then the, the little wedge part of the, uh, the little foam wedge, if you like, that's on the cable, that does actually move around. You can position that where you like. All I do is just tuck that into the chin rest there and then again I'm free, the cable's not going anywhere. So the green microphone I've got here, which is the V5200LB, um, they say that this is for live productions. So um, if I was playing live with a couple of other band members, if I had a drummer or if I was in a jazz trio or quartet, something like that, or um, I was playing in a Kaylee band or whatever, whatever it is, if I'm playing in a live situation possibly with, with other people or you know, perhaps you've got an audience listening as well, um, this is ideal for that. So what this one does is, um, to kind of put it into layman terms if you like, or just, just possibly kind of nutshell it, um, this just picks up, this is designed to pick up just the violin. And what it does, it, it tends to, or it's, it's gonna try to block out any other sound which is outside about a foot or, or so of the actual violin. So it would, try to, it would try to block out the other instruments. So if I was playing with, with, I don't know, five other people in a band and they too had microphones, I don't want this microphone picking up all the other instruments as well. Because when it comes to the mix down stage, if we're all bleeding into everybody else's microphones, it's gonna be an absolute nightmare to mix because I've got my violin sound that's been recorded through this, plus I've got the drummer coming through it as well, and then I've got a bit of saxophone or another string player coming through it as well. So what this is gonna do is, is put in a little bit of suppression so that it just blocks out some of the sound audience noises as well that are a foot or so outside of the violin. Um, because there is a suppression on there, some sound, uh, the, or the, the sound, has to go along the whole spectrum. So some sound, of course, is gonna, it's gonna disappear because it's not taking, if you imagine, I suppose if you imagine the sound of my violin when I play is going to fill the whole room, but all this is doing is just taking sort of a small bubble around my violin. So I'm losing some of the ambient sounds outside of the violin, um, kind of in, in a sort of a nutshell kind of way. Um, but that's great for live productions because I don't want to pick up anything outside of my violin. Um, I just want to pick up preferably just me because it's going to be so much easier to mix me, get, get my violin to have a nice sound, put some reverb, put some effects, that kind of thing. Otherwise, like I said, if you've got all the drummer and everything, you're going to be adding the effects to him as well and everybody else that you're with. Um, if you want to do a studio recording, of course, then they do have a separate microphone for that, which isn't going to do any suppression and it is going to pick up the full spectrum. But of course, you'd be in a studio environment where it would just be you as well. So I'm going to get on and do some demonstrations now. I'm going to do um, two, dem two different types of demonstrations for you. I'm going to demonstrate the sound of the violin under the fingerboard. I'm going to, sound I'm going to demonstrate under the tailpiece as well to see if you can hear any difference. So here are the demonstrations.
So like I said before, I, I for my violin and the way my violin is and you know the the kind of the, the sound that comes from the violin, it's very high and it's very sweet. I personally prefer the sound that you get from the tail piece, but you know, it's just a case of trial and error depending on, it really doesn't matter. There is no right or wrong way. Some of you might like that, that nicer kind of fuller, kind of more gritty sound that you possibly get from underneath the soundboard. But like I said, for me, um, especially because I do a lot of studio based recordings as well, um, you know, re recording for albums and backing tracks and all that kind of thing. So uh, for me, underneath the, tail, underneath the tail piece works really well with my violin. So I guess um, in conclusion, um, it is these microphones or this this microphone. Um, I, I love the microphone. I, I genuinely uh, I I genuinely wish that I had this microphone three or four years ago. And um, there just wasn't anything like it on the market. The only thing that I had was the was the hook over ones. Um, there are other microphones on the market. I'm sure there were at the time, but that's fine if you've got a budget and you've got you know two three thousand pounds or a couple of thousand dollars to spend on a microphone. That would be fine. But obviously that's a little bit out of budget. Uh, or it was a little bit out of budget for me then so you know I don't mind paying money to get the, the nice microphones but anything above that would you know it just depends how deep your pockets are doesn't it um, but this this microphone is brilliant um, I just everything from the whole design to the way it's the microphone actually works inside but for me as a violinist uh, the most important thing for me was for something that didn't cause or two things that were important for me, something that didn't cause any damage to my violin, which this certainly doesn't. It's very unobtrusive. Um, and also I wanted something that, that was going to catch an ambient sound from my violin. Um, I really like the sound that my ears hear. So if you've got something that's attached to the body of the violin, that's gonna give you a different sound than what my ears are hearing after the sound has gone through the violin and it's come out and it's come into my ears. So that was more of the sound that I wanted to capture um, which is all the overtones and the undertones of the violin, which is exactly what this microphone is based on. So it's a very clever idea and just the whole way they've executed it from the, just everything inside it to the delivery method as well has been very well thought out, um, you know, and they've come out with a really good product. So the sound is, I find the sound is nice and clear. It's crisp. It's got a nice good range. Um, there is some slight loss with the green one due to suppression, but again, you really don't want to be using a studio type microphone um, when you're gigging and you're, you, you, you want to record a live performance with other musicians because that would just be a total nightmare. You'd be picking up so much stuff. But because you'd be sitting within the mix of say four or five other musicians as well, the loss of suppression really wouldn't matter whatsoever. In fact, it's just kind of a, uh, it's the lesser of two evils, isn't it? What you're losing in, su in suppression, you're gaining a much better mix if you were to use a completely different microphone. So for example, the hook microphone that I had um, that would be no good for me because it's going to pick up everything. It's going to pick up everybody in the back of the room and the audience and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, I, like I said before, I prefer it uh, to go in the, the tail piece for me, for my violin, but there's no right or wrong with that. It's just a case of what you like and the sound that you like out of that. The silicone cable is, is just genius. Um, I've never actually seen anything like that before on a microphone, um, but it's really good. You'd be surprised how much clanging you get from the cable on the violin, especially when you're moving around and you know the cable comes loose and everything. Um, but together with the foam wedge and the cable, I think it's, uh, I think it's a brilliant idea. It's invisible to the crowd or it's invisible to the audience as well. So if I probably hadn't mentioned it, you might not even have known that I had the microphone uh, inside the violin or, or underneath the tailpiece at all there, maybe except for possibly the wire. If I was wearing black, you possibly still wouldn't have seen it anyway. And also uh, they say that you can leave it in the violin case as well. So you don't have to take, keep taking it out. Obviously just, just you can wrap up the cable. It's got one of those Velcro ties around the cable. So you don't have to keep removing the microphone. Obviously the hook over one that I had, I had to keep removing that and putting it back in its case because I wouldn't be able to shut the lid of the case. But this one, pop the violin straight in, shut the case, zip it up and off you go. Jobs are good. Just the negatives, if I had any, were that the cable's probably a little bit too short for me. Just, I mean, that, that's just a personal preference for me. The cable's probably a good, I don't know, maybe a good couple of meters, something like that, maybe a meter and a half, meter and three quarters. Some, I haven't measured it exactly, but um, personally for me, and just the way I use it, I might have just preferred a slightly longer cable, but it's really not an issue. It would not stop me buying the microphone. Um, as I say, I absolutely love the microphone, so it's a very, very minor detail there for me. 
um, and just possibly the price. It's the, the price is quite expensive. So if I go through that for you, the, the microphone retails at 739 euros. So it's a Danish company. Uh, you can buy it directly from their website, which is www.remike.dk. So the address of that will be coming up here now. They are looking, um, they are working with UK and international suppliers as well to try and get the microphone out there internationally. But you can get it from their website in Denmark at the moment. Um, anyway, so uh, rather than a third party supplier or something, you can still buy it directly from them. So it's 739 euros, which um, as of today is about approximately, uh, just rounded it up a little bit, is 630 pounds. Um, so 630 English pounds and in dollars it's about 996 so around about a thousand dollars obviously depending on the exchange rate but as of today that's roughly how much the costs are so the cost is quite high 630 pounds for a microphone is quite a lot of money for a microphone however it, it is exceptional you get every single penny's worth from 630 pounds yes I would recommend and I would buy it myself as well so that's it guys uh thanks for watching uh this review sorry that it might have been a long review but i just wanted to make sure that i covered everything and just give you my all my thoughts and my honest thoughts and my opinions um yeah i love the mic go and buy one okay. thanks very much for watching don't forget to watch my other review of the the other microphone that you can use for studio recordings the red version of this one uh, that i've just uh, demonstrated for you uh thanks very much for watching and i'll see you all next time